There's been a ton of stuff to talk about lately. I feel like this time of the year, there's been a ton of trailers dropping for a bunch of different things. And now we have an Avengers trailer, the sequel to Infinity War, officially titled Avengers Endgame. I like that title. We're in the Endgame now. But at least us fans now have uh, some footage to keep us excited until the movie comes out next year. And the trailer, it's fairly short, but damn, it's a... Uh... It's pretty depressing, which makes sense because the end of Infinity War, that was hard to watch. I mean, it's a comic book movie, right? You know everyone's going to be fine in the end, that the bad guy will be defeated, maybe we'll lose a couple people along the way, but overall they'll win. But just watching all these characters that we've grown to love over the period of a decade just disappear into ashes, it was heartbreaking. He did it. Today we're going to dissect the Endgame trailer and see what it might mean for the overall story and also where it might be pulling some comic book influences from. By the end of Infinity War, everyone's in a bad spot except for Thanos. Especially Tony who's stranded on another planet with Nebula. And the trailer starts off with him making a recording on his helmet because he's about to run out of food and water. It looks like him and Nebula escaped on the ship and they're just kind of floating in space alone. We get a glimpse of Nebula on the ship looking pretty sorrowful. Sorrowful? Is that a word? Sorrowful. It's sad. There you go. And it seems like she's going to be a bit more of a, a softer character this time around. You can kind of tell because in a quick moment, it looks like she's laying her hand on Tony's shoulder almost to like comfort him. This isn't typical behavior you'd expect from the nebula that we've seen. I mean, you've seen glimpses of the good person inside, but not a whole lot. It's going to be really interesting to see how the relationship between Tony and Nebula uh, develops since he had no idea who she was before. And now these two strangers are basically lost in space together. And the trailer implies that they've been out there for a long time now. If they're running out of food and water, then again, she is mostly robotic at this point. So I don't know how affected she's going to be by this food and water shortage. Thanos is seen walking around, touching plants, real gently, wherever he's living now. And this falls right in line with the comics, too. If you go back to the Infinity Gauntlet comic book series, which I actually did an Untold Legends episode analyzing that whole story arc. So you can click here right in the corner and check that out after this video. In that storyline, after Thanos is defeated, he quietly goes to some backwater planet and decides to live a farmer's life in peace. He's just done with everything. The trailer also shows a scarecrow that he made out of his armor that was also lifted directly from the pages. I love it when comic book movies take influence from the source material, but not just that, take specific shots that fans of the comics will recognize instantly. It's beautiful. Captain America, looks like Thor could be there too, Black Widow, and Bruce Banner are all in the Avengers headquarters feeling the after effects of Thanos clicking his fingers, and it seems that they're trying to come up with a plan to come back from all this, and they definitely come up with something because Captain America says this is gonna work Steve I know it is because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't but what could this plan be time travel now hear me out that might sound kind of silly you might think uh, time travel uh, doesn't seem very realistic let's remember this is a comic book movie there's a, a freaking time stone in this universe that manipulates time so time travel is already kind of in there but I think that whatever plan they came up with it does involve time travel and there is proof to support that theory. There is proof. Ant-Man shows up at the end of the trailer, revealed to still be alive. Last time we saw him at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, his whole group vanished, and he was the only one left stuck in the Quantum Realm because they made that machine where he could now travel through it. The original Wasp also told him not to get stuck in any time vortexes. And don't get sucked into a time vortex. We won't be able to save you. I think that together with Bruce Banner and this whole Quantum Realm technology, they create some way to travel through time. Also, let me present Exhibit B, I guess you could call it. Let's take a look at some of these set photos that were actually leaked a little while ago. There's photos of Ant-Man, Tony, and Captain America together in what looks like the Battle of New York from the first Avengers movie. A time in which Scott Lang, Ant-Man, wasn't even around yet. Tony clearly looks older here than he did in the original Avengers movie. But look at Captain America. He's clean-shaven. He's wearing his Avengers 1 uniform and he looks younger. They're most definitely in the past in that time period. Not to mention that we also have shots in the trailer real quick showing Captain America in his Winter Soldier uniform. But back to the photos. Let's look at Ant-Man's hand. He's got this device that wasn't there before that looks like it's kind of integrated into his glove. And Captain America and Tony are wearing something similar that looks just like it. It has to be some kind of time travel device. I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm on the right track here. I would love to hear some of your comments down below. 
and I'm sure I'm not the only one that's thought of this, but that's got to be where they're headed with this story. If that's the case, then Ant-Man becomes the most important Avenger in this entire movie. And we have Hawkeye back in the spotlight, looking very different. For those of you familiar with the comics, you're instantly going to recognize here the persona of Ronan. Hawkeye has had multiple identities in the comics. Of course, he's been Hawkeye. He was the giant Goliath for a while. And for a very short period of time, he even took over the role of Captain America. And at one point, after being revived, losing his memory, after a bunch of convoluted comic book events that is not important for the sake of this video, he also took the mantle of Ronan, a badass-looking ninja warrior. And that's what we see here in the trailer. Hawkeye's dropped his previous identity as Hawkeye and adopted this new one. I suspect because his family probably bit the dust too, because of Thanos. He's a different Hawkeye than before. Looks like he's wiping blood on his clothes from his sword after butchering several bad guys. And Black Widow almost has this look of shock on her face. And look at his face when he turns around. He just, the guy looks miserable. He looks like a man that's just lost everything. And it's the perfect reason the character has to get back in the fight alongside the rest of the Avengers against this giant purple monster that destroyed half the universe. And this also kind of mixes in influences from the ultimate Marvel Comics line, an alternate, more modern retelling of all these old characters. In that version of Hawkeye, he's got a family, kids and everything, and he loses them too in a much darker way. They're, they're murdered in front of him due to a traitorous Black Widow's actions. After he lost them, his personality became a lot more ferocious, and his life of fighting crime just completely takes over his life. And he's constantly getting into fights with his other teammates, personality completely changed. So to me, the endgame version of Hawkeye is, is definitely a mix of classic Ronin Hawkeye and the ultimate angry version of the character. I, I really couldn't be more excited about this. But that's about everything that the trailer showed. Like I said, it didn't show very much, but the few things that it does show, if you know the comics, you can really pull a lot of information from the trailer. So I'm really looking forward to seeing when the next trailer drops, all the cool little things we can analyze there. I'll catch you guys later. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.